Shalom. I'm Eddie Chumney of Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to be covering Glenn Beck going to Israel. And his visit to Israel should be of great interest to the Christian world because it actually highlights the 2,000-year-old tensions between Christianity and Judaism. For those of you who are not familiar with Glenn Beck, he is a conservative commentator in the United States, and he has a national radio and TV audience. He was formerly on the Fox News Network, but recently has been taken off the air. Being a conservative, he is disliked by the liberals in the United States. Traditionally, 80% of Jews vote Democratic. And in the United States, the Democratic Party is viewed as being more liberal than the Republican Party. So by Glenn Beck having conservative views, he is not only disliked by the left in America, but he's disliked by many Jews as well. And many of those Jews who dislike Glenn Beck, they are secular Jews. Recently, on the Fox News Network, Glenn Beck has tried to make the American audience aware of the political influences that people like George Soros, who is a European Jew, has on the political process in the United States and on the Obama administration. Because the views and the agenda of George Soros is very much liberal in nature, this creates dislike for Glenn Beck in even covering the subject. But in speaking negatively about the political agenda that George Soros has as expressed in the Democratic Party or through the Democratic Party and ultimately the media, just making people aware of these things has caused Glenn Beck to be accused of being anti-Semitic. And he has got the wrath of various Jewish groups in the United States. So Glenn Beck decided that he should go to Israel and he should express his support for the nation of Israel and the Jewish people in an event that he organized for August called Restoring Courage. Last month in July, Glenn Beck addressed the Israeli Knesset. And in doing so, he was introduced to the Israeli Knesset by Likud Knesset member Danny Danone. Now, the Likud party is the party of Benjamin Netanyahu. And in welcoming Glenn Beck to the Knesset, Danny Danone said, Your love of Israel comes from the heart. Danny Danone is the chairman of the Knesset Immigration Absorption and Diaspora Affairs Committee, and he invited Glenn Beck to Israel to speak before the Knesset about those in the international community who are trying to delegitimize Israel. And he's here to express his support for the Jewish people. And in addressing the Israeli Knesset, that is the political body in Israel that consists of 120 members, Glenn Beck told the Knesset Aliyah and Absorption Committee that Biblical Esther and Ruth have guided him as he stands up for Israel. Glenn Beck says Esther knew she had no choice but to come out and speak. He said, referring to Queen Esther's risking her life to save the Persian Jewish community. I knew I had no choice but to speak the truth. I came here in 2002, looked for the truth, and when I got home, I received my first death threat. 
Speaking of Ruth, a non-Jew who followed her Jewish mother-in-law Naomi from Moab to Israel and then converted, Beck said, Your people are my people, and I will go where you will go. Your God is my God, and I invite the people of Israel to stand with your God. Emulating the words of Ruth that is found in Ruth chapter 1. Glenn Beck goes on to say, We have to believe in common decency. Link arms, and God will do the rest. Now, Glenn Beck himself is a Mormon, and... In America, among much of mainstream Christianity, they regard Mormons and Mormonism as an illegitimate sect of Christianity. So this, however, doesn't seem to be as great of an issue, and that is Beck's Mormonism as he is expressing his support for the nation of Israel and organized around 2,000 people to be attending the four-day event known as Restoring Courage. Glenn Beck said that the demands of the Palestinian Authority are another excuse for the world to continue a centuries-old campaign of anti-Semitism, which he said is going through the roof. The United States has an economic problem, and when they do, the Jews will be blamed. The Arab-Israeli conflict is about the end of the West and the destruction of Israel. So Glenn Beck is there to show support for Israel and to speak about and giving insight of the Palestinian Authority's agenda in seeking to obtain a Palestinian state based upon 67 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. So even though Glenn Beck is in Israel and he's seeking to show support for the Jewish people and support for the Israeli government, speaking out against anti-Semitism, there are still many skeptics among the Jewish people and There has been opposition raised by Glenn Beck's visit by those on the Israeli political left as well as various religious Jewish groups as well. In an August 22nd article that appeared in the Jerusalem Post, Glenn Beck says, We are entering the age of miracles of God. The solutions to the problems of our time are not within the reach of political leaders, but divinity, U.S. pundit Glenn Beck told nearly 3,000 enthusiastic followers in the Caesarea Amphitheater in Israel on Sunday night at the opening event of his four-day Restoring Courage rally. I've spent the last few years trying to find solutions to what is happening in the world, he said on the backdrop of the pillars of the grand stage. While there may not be a political solution, the good news is that the God of Abraham ain't running for office, he said to a loud applause. Be not afraid. Know who he is. Know his face. Know that he is a God of covenants and miracles. We are leaving the age of man-made miracles of spacecraft, and we are entering the age of the miracles of God. Beck addressed the sensitivity of the Christian evangelical love to Israel and the Jews, which many Jews shy away from in suspicion. There is a 2,000-year-old flinch of the Jewish people when someone says to the Jewish people, I love you. I'd imagine the Jewish people at first would say thank you. But over the years, Christian love of Jews and their desire to bring them to the truthful beliefs cost too many lies. It's not just the Holocaust. It's happened over and over again, said Beck. There are important distinctions of saying, I love Israel. I defend Israel and not separating that from the Jewish people. Make sure to say not that we only love Israel, but we love the Jewish people as they are. One Jew not afraid of contemporary Christian love is Rabbi Shlomo Riskin, who is the chief rabbi of the West Bank settlement of Ephrat, and he has been active in Jewish Christian dialogue. He is the reason I had hope 
because he reached back and didn't question, just heard love and that is good enough for him, Beck said of Riskin, who was instrumental in making Beck believe he could pull off the restoring courage event in Israel. For close to 2,000 years, we were persecuted by the church, suffered wars at the hands of the church, Riskin said. Now, despite the fact we are different Jews and not Christians, who respect Jesus as a Jewish teacher and not of God, you Christians have the courage to love us in our otherness. We are grateful to your courage to love us, stand by us in the time of our grave need and danger as rockets fall in southern Israel towns. Pastor John Hagee, head of Christians United for Israel, equated today's Israel to West Berlin, Germany of 1963, when President John F. Kennedy gave his Ich bin ein Berliner speech. Like that speech of the city in the midst of communism, Israel is today a tiny island, an outpost swimming in a sea of tyranny. I stand here with a strong message at this difficult juncture in history. Please know that what I say now is shared by multiple Christians. Ani Israeli. I am an Israeli, Hagee said. The crowd chanting with him. Beck also addressed the controversy over his visit here, which is being frowned upon by politicians from the left. Somebody said we're going to bring chaos, mayhem, in the Wednesday rally close to the Temple Mount. And I thought, it's the Middle East. How would you know? We don't bring chaos and mayhem, he said in a more serious tone. No, we bring truth. We bring peace. We bring support. We bring comfort. Let our actions this week and from here out, let the Jewish people know no matter what our governments say, we are not our governments. We stand with you. This next article tells us about Jewish objection in the religious circles. This opposition comes from a member of the Likud political party of Benjamin Netanyahu, Moshe Faglin. Moshe Faglin says, Glenn Beck should do an event in his court, not mine. Besides territorial sovereignty, there is also a concept of spiritual sovereignty. When he holds his event so close to the Temple Mount, he is supporting us physically, but undermining us spiritually. Faglin noted that Beck was purposely holding his event close to the site where, according to the New Testament, Jesus overturned the tables of the money changers, where Jews on pilgrimage to Jerusalem redeemed funds for sacrifices that would be made in the temple. He said this was problematic because the incident has been a source for anti-Semitism for centuries. This created the image of Jews as pursuers of money and Christian anti-Semitism that led to rivers of Jewish blood, Faglin said. Glenn Beck doesn't back the Jewish mission. What drives him is the Christian mission. I have no problem doing business with him, but he has to respect me when he comes here, just like I don't try to force my identity on him when I come to him. Faglin mocked right-wing figures such as M.K., Danny Danone of the Likud, and Council of Jewish Communities in Judea, Samaria, and the Gaza Strip, Chairman Danny Dayan, who have facilitated Beck's visit. Jews like it when the non-Jews finally smile at them, but sometimes a smile is more dangerous than a scowl, and this is one of those occasions, Faglin said. Dayan responded that Israel has too many real foes and very few genuine friends like Lem Beck. I cannot understand the urge to reject his friendship with pseudo-theological argumentation. He added, rejecting friendship is not a sign of national pride, but a proof of very low self-confidence. So we pray that this Israel-focused news update has been a blessing to you and it will help you understand how the events that happen in Israel are related and associated to the 2,000 year history of Christian Jewish relations. Until we do it again next week, Shalom. <music>